OK, so a little awkward. I'm totally crashing these lightning talks, and I've disrupted the, the chain of events that should play out. I don't even know how long I'm supposed to be talking. So if I go on too, too long, and I am, in my old age, telling far too many stories, you are welcome to just start shouting, we're very bored. Please get off the stage now. I will do that. Uh, but I will try not to take up too darn much space today. Uh, hi there. I'm Rachel Neighbors, uh, documentation manager for React and React Native, and Relay, who is also a part of the React family, although you may not have heard of it, you know, at GraphQL. Anyway, that's for a future talk. Uh, and today, I've come to chat with you a little bit about something that, uh, well, a couple of things. First off, I don't know if you noticed, but we just kind of had a whole year of dead air. Like, I mean, what was that? I, my, my, my concept of time has completely gone out the door, hence why I might run a little long. Uh, but there was actually something I wanted to share with you before the pandemic wiped out all the talks and all the conferences. And that is what I'm here to talk with you today about documentation as your second source of truth. And there's a little project uh, back in uh, 2019 with React Native, and I want to tell you a little bit about it. But first, docs. Your first source of truth is your source, of course. Uh, your first source is your source, of course, of course. Uh, your first source of truth is your source code, of course. Uh, but very few code bases can be read, read through in one hour. I remember the era of jQuery, where you could learn JavaScript and jQuery by literally reading the jQuery source code. If only we were so lucky today. Uh, so your first source of uh, truth might be your source code, but you're going to need a second source of truth. Uh, the next best thing is your documentation that shows how all these different pieces work together and how people can implement them and work with them and build things, et cetera, because um, otherwise you don't have time to read all the source. Oh, that is not the right animation. Oh, well, carrying on. We're, we're, we're getting back into the groove here. I'm surprised that the MCs have still got it, even though they've been off the air for like a year, like, dang. Oh. Let's see if I've still got some, too. So when I first joined the React team, I had the task of taking React Native, React Native, seen a lot of React Native folks here today, uh, and its documentation site, and making the docs rock even more. Uh, it was a fun project. Uh, user testing, I, start, I used to be a UXer uh, back in the day, so I start all the projects I get assigned with, like, let's talk to real people. Uh, and these conversations uh, revealed that, you know, we needed more refresher material on React, learners wanted more visual content, we lacked in-depth uh, content on some specific specialized topics, our high-traffic component and API documentation needed a little update, and, uh, you know, People kept saying, we want more interactive code. When can I run these examples? I'm not going to set up an Android SDK. I'm an iOS developer. Come on. All right. It was, we also learned a little bit more about our audience and things we didn't know before. For instance, 41% of React Native developers, they come from a mobile background. Like, some folks, they, they, they didn't have any background in anything before they came, or even web. Uh, these were very interesting people to talk with. And it also made us realize that, you know, probably should build in things like literal context switchers to speak to people from different backgrounds. Before, we were just like, you probably know React. Here's React for your mobile device, which was cool, except for people who were already developing for mobile and did not know what was Re React was. So nice, took care of that. Um, we added these really cool interactive examples everywhere to get people up and running, a React refresher to introduce them to it reintroduced folks to React really quickly, which kind of inspired a future project we'll get to in a moment. Um, and because the docs, well, they weren't automatically generated, that meant driving an entire community uh, drive to update the documentation, which was a lot of fun, because people really want to get engaged in their favorite project. But sometimes these projects are so far matured, there's no more low-hanging fruit. But there's still a way to participate in contributing to documentation. So we, so we got everything back up to date. We brought in some experts as guest writers to patch up the places where we needed some deep dives, added colorful illustrations that turned out to be very popular. And since rebooting React Native's documentation with the new content, we saw a 70% increase in you know, thumbs up metrics across the board on the page. That was really nice. Felt great. 
So bad documentation can lead to bad developer experiences. It makes it hard for devs to get uh, from good to great. And it makes it even harder for them to, to teach others, to spread the word about the thing that they love and that they've found. For instance, uh, big communities need great docs. 86% uh, of React developers, they've learned using the documentation at reactjs.org. That's kind of incredible. Uh, React.js has been investing in its documentation since day one. And people often say that the docs were where they first got into UI development in the first place. Uh, so you'd think, well, with that, kind of, uh, with that kind of power, you should spend a lot of time on your documentation, investing in your second source of truth to empower your community to build out an entire ecosystem of reliable, up-to-date content to teach each other, to dive deep, to build on top of what you've made, and to trust that what they're teaching is true and correct and something they can build a career or a community or a training course or a boot camp off of. That's scaling knowledge. And we're putting these lessons from before the pandemic, the things that we have learned from React Native and from the React community and what worked with the React.js docs, we've been putting them to action over the past, over the past uh, well, <laughs> since the before times. Uh, and today, we want to share with you a little sneak peek of what we've been working on. This is super, super beta, but if you go to beta.reactjs.org, you can see the latest iteration of the React documentation. We'd love to know what you think about it. There's places on the site for you to leave feedback. And we really hope that uh, we hope to hear from you. If you like it, that's awesome. If you don't like it, tell us why. We are waiting for your feedback. Uh, thank you, and, and welcome back.